so we will read here he asked us to read and place him today so we will continue reading about Sri Krishna Chaitanya Das yes. Babaji ah. mm. So, I will I will tell one part of story. Then we will start. We will continue because it's in the middle. We stopped in the middle of the story. So, Baba. Uh, began to live in Chandra Sarovar. Chandra Sarovar. Does someone know where Chandra Sarovar is? Gurudev, could you maybe tell us where is Chandra Sarovar? Or someone else? Okay. So, in Chandra Sarovar, Two devotees built uh, uh, rooms for Baba, and in 1930, one devotee from Bengal, Bengal came to Baba. His name was Rakhala Das. So this devotee was very worried. He said to Baba, Baba, there is no sin <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't commit. All the sin, all possible sins. <laughs> what you can imagine and you, what you cannot imagine. I did all. <laughs> and then he asked, asked like, uh, can I still such a sinful person? Like uh, me, can I still live in Vrindavan? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then, yeah, and then Baba, Baba asked him, yeah, 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 why not? Now at this stage of life, that your life is end ended, ending <laughs> you are aware that how you lived so just staying in vrindavan listening to Srimad bhagavatam just living in vrindavan is seva so just uh, live in vrindavan and radharani will certainly have mercy upon you So Arakala Das uh, began to stay in Vrindavan. He chanted Harinam and he organized also Bhagavad Saptaha. It's seven day recitations of Bhagavatam. And uh, one fortunate he, here is written that soon after Saptaha, after hearing Bhagavatam, Rakala Das received the mercy of Radha. One fortunate moment when he was fully in good shape and conscious, he was chanting Harinam, and suddenly, see, he just left his body. to take shelter under the lotus feet of Radharani in her Nitya hmm. Then story about another Vaishnava. 
Vraj Mohan Das G of Yashohara. Uh, took Vesha, Babaji Vesh from Krishna Chaitanya Das Babaji and also lived in Chandra Sarovar and served Baba. And once asked for instruction about how to do Lila Smara. Baba then expressed two views of great saint, two great saints of his time who became Siddha through Lila Smara. So Baba said, when Pandit Ramakrishna Das Baba lived in Bala Pokhara in Govarda, I went to him and asked the same question. <laughs> Tell me about Lila Smara. Uh, how to meditate, how to remember Radha, Krishna, Lila, and me in that Lila. And uh, he replied, if anyone else had asked me to give him instruction in Lila Smarana, I would slap him on his cheek. And I understood what he meant. And I did not have the courage to say anything. Lila Smarana is not easy. Once two devotees went to Jagadish Das Baba of Kalyadaha. And requested him to give them instruction in Lila Smaran. And Baba talked about other things, but did not, did not say a word about Lila Smaran. Then these two devotees went again after a few days and asked again. And again, they returned disappointed because Baba just avoided all questions regarding Lila Smara. Then these devotees began to practice Lila Smarana after taking instruction from another Mahatma. Next time, when they went to Baba, they found that he knew everything about their bhajan without their telling him anything about it. <laughs> so Baba asked these two devotees with a smile, how is your smarana going on? <laughs> <laughs> they replied it is going on but uh, not very satisfactory and then Baba said there is you, you don't know there is no smarana without marana Death. There is no smarana without dying. 
one has to conquer the body and forget all about it before doing Lila Smaran. One has, for all practical purposes, to die. To die for this world. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Das Baba was now very old, but still he would get up at two o'clock in the morning. Then he took bath in Chandra in Chandra Sarovara, even when the weather was coldest. And then he would sat, sat down, sit down for bhajan in his kuti. Hot. But the pain he was suffering in separation from Radha was increasing day by day. He had gone to Radha once, but he was made to return. And he had not seen her since then. It was becoming more and more impossible for him. To, to live without his beloved Radha. So he made one more effort to fly to her. <laughs> one day, a Brahmin of Rajabasi Uh, he was Baba's disciple, suspected that Baba was no more here in this world. This Rajabasi used to go to Baba's Kuti early in the morning every day. Excuse me, Rade Rade. Rade. I, need, I need again uh, the room because the internet uh, went away. Yeah, and yeah, we will set. Okay, Rade. Thank Rade. you, thank you. Rade. <laughs> mm, okay. Rade. Mm. So after bathing in Chandra Sarovara, he would go to Baba and say, Jai Radhe. And he would perform Dandavat in front of the Kuti. Baba accepted his Dandavat by saying, Jai Radhe. But that morning, no response from Bob. As the door of Kuti was closed from inside, Vrajavasi could not go in. But he repeated, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, several times. No response. Then, Frijavasi went to a Mahatma who lived close by 
and expressed to him his anxiety about Baba. Then Mahatma said to him, Absence of any response from Baba is not a cause for anxiety. Because Baba is so absorbed in Lila that he often goes into Samadhi and remains unconscious for hours. But I saw one extraordinary thing happen this morning. I saw that Baba's kuti was glowing with a supernatural light. The light I had never seen before. I do not know what kind of light it was. I never saw that Baba was using lamp in his cottage. Besides, I did not hear today the sound of opening or closing the doors, door, which I, which I always do. When Baba goes out of Kuti to take bath in Chandra Sarovar. This certainly is some cause for anxiety. But let us wait for some time and see whether consciousness returns to him or not. After, they waited for long. And then they tried again. They shouted, Jai Radhe! Jai Radhe! Jai Radhe! Several times. No response. Then they called the villagers. They broke open the door of the kuti. And they saw that Baba was lying unconscious, breathing very slowly. Then they started kirtana. hoping to bring him back to consciousness. And they sang till evening. But Baba's condition didn't change. It began to appear that he was breathing He's lost. Just then, the son of a Goswami from Barshana came running with Pana Bini, a roll of betel leaf with bits of betel nut, lime, and katechu for chewing in his hand. He asked, where is that Bengali Baba who is about to die? Baba is inside the kuti, replied the villagers. The boy said, give this panabin to him. 
Radharani has sent it for him. Radha said to me in a dream yesterday night, I gave darshan to the Bengali Baba of Chandra Sarovar because he was unable to bear my viraha, separation from me. But his mortal frame could not bear my darshan. He is about to die. You go and give this panabini to him. It is my prasad. And this panabini will prevent his death. As soon as the panabini was pushed into Baba's mouth, he regained consciousness. He said, Jai Radhe! And sat, set up. But he remained in a state of dinion, divion mada, divine madness, for several months. He would huh, sometimes laugh, sometimes weep, sometimes fall unconscious on the ground. People thought Baba has gone mad. They took him to the Gwalior temple in Kusum Sarovar for treatment. In Gwalior, the temple, food used to be served on behalf of the brother of Raja of Gwalior. As soon as Baba reached there, he said, I will not eat Raja's food. Take me back from here. Then people brought him back to Chandra Sarovara. And gradually, his madness subsided. Radharani has once again how to say he has used this word foiled. Foiled his attempt to live. How to say this in English? It's, uh, yeah, she like uh, didn't allow this. Exactly. Yeah. Once again, Radha didn't allow him, Baba, to leave this world. Blocked his attempt. Yeah, blocked. Yeah. Mm. Because Radha wanted to keep Baba alive for some more time to serve as a lighthouse to the fallen souls and show them the path of bhakti. 
by example and precept. What is precept? Precept is like um, precept is like a teaching. Ah, by example and teaching. Okay, by example and teaching. At last, the time came when Radharani desired to accept him in her service. Baba came to know about it. And he thought he should go and meet all the people who were there, dear to him. So he went to Shesha Shai, Vanshi, and other villages, stayed there for some time, and then he came back. On returning, he said to Vraj Mohan Das, this time, I told everyone that uh, that was my last meeting with them. They felt so much sorrow and pain. But what could I do? In the year 1940, on Kartika Krishna Ashtami, Baba finally left his body to take shelter under the lotus feet of Radha. His samadhi was laid in Chandra Sarovar. Radha Radha. <laughs> Jai. Okay. So Yeah. So would someone like to share some feelings, some realizations, <laughs> some questions. Thank you. Everyone is welcome. Okay, so we will move on to chapter 26, title, The Blind Baba, The Blind Babaji of Madana Terra. About 80 years ago, so this book was, uh, oh, it was printed. Is there a 1998? Uh, so, so this was 1920, about 1920. There lived uh, in Vrindavan, in a kuti near Madan Mohan's temple. This we know where it is. <laughs> a blind Babaji. 
no one knew his name. People called him Madana Teravale Baba. Baba of Madana Ter. This is area surrounding Radha Madan Mohan's temple. Because the Baba Baba lived mostly in this area, area of Madana Ter. Early in the morning, after taking bath in Yamuna, he used to go and hide himself. <laughs> in the forests, bowers of Madana Ter, mm -hmm. gardens, yeah. He remained there till evening, all the time remembering Radha Krishna and their Lila, and crying while remembering. In the evening, he went to temple of Radha Govindaji. Spoke with them and cried again. Then he would took Madukari from three or four houses he took his dinner and slept. But his, his tears never stopped. Because of weeping constantly, he became blind. And he didn't feel sorry for this. <laughs> because the eyes with which he could not see Krishna were of no use to him. Right? Mm, blind. But now Baba had been weeping for, he was crying for 40 years. His life was about to end. And the utmost limits of his patience were crossed. He could not wait anymore. The pain of separation became unbearable. Sometimes, because of this pain, he fell unconscious, kept lying on the ground amidst the trees for hours. There was no one to take care of him. No one to express sympathy with him. The chirping of small birds and the calls of the cuckoos and peacocks tried to awaken him. but in vain, no use. When the pain of separation becomes unbearable to the bhakta, it also becomes 
unbearable to Bhagavan. Radha and Krishna could no more remain in separation from Baba. Once, while taking a walk, they came to Madana Terra, where Baba was crying under a tree. Radha and Krishna said to him, Pyare, beloved. Ah, Radha said, sorry, Radha said to Krishna, Pyare, my beloved, Baba is always weeping. Why not make him laugh a little? Krishna went to Baba and said, Baba, why are you weeping? Has someone beaten you or stolen something from you? Oh no, you go away, said the blind Baba in rage. Baba, I shall bring you roti or chacha, buttermilk, or whatever you want. But you should not weep. Again said Krishna, uh, entertainingly, entertainingly, <laughs> like entertainer. Oh, cowherd, said Baba, go and tend your cows. Why have you come here to trouble me? Baba turned his face from Krishna as he said this. So Krishna went back to Radha, said, Baba does not listen. He's just crying and crying. Then Radha said, Piare, you couldn't. But see, I will make him laugh. So Radha went to Baba and said, Baba, Why do you weep? Have you lost your wife? Then Baba laughed <laughs> and said, Lali, I never had a wife. I see, said Radha. So you weep because you have no one whom you can regard as your own. Said Radha with a tone of voice of deep sympathy. Baba said, uh, grievously. How, how do grie grievous, like, Serious. 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 With serious, serious face. Yeah. No, Lali. I do not weep for that. I weep because those who are mine have forgotten me. Huh? Have forgotten me. Who are they, Baba? Lali, you do not know. One of them is the heartless son of Nanda, mm -hmm. 
who always tempts and tantalizes but never shows himself. And the other, oh, what shall I say about her love? The other is Radha. But she also became heartless in his company. When Radha heard this, she felt seriously hurt. In the innermost corner of his heart. She bursted out. Me? Me heartless? Then trying to conceal herself. She said, Baba, my name also is Radha. Tell me what you want. What should I say, Lali? What can I want more? The only thing I want is their darsha. Baba, you are very simple. You do not know what you cannot see, that you cannot see them, even if they give you darshan, because you are blind. Then Baba replied, Lali, you are simple, not I. You do not know that I will get back my eyesight as soon as they touch my eyes with their lotus hands. Radha could not keep herself away anymore. She touched one eye of Baba with her lotus hand. Krishna touched the other. Immediately, Baba could see. He saw both Radha and Krishna. The twin divinities of his heart standing before him in all their shining beauty and looking at him lovingly and mercifully. Baba was so overwhelmed with joy and emotion, he fell unconscious. All night he lay, lay unconscious. Next morning, some people went for Parikram of Vrindavan, saw him and recognized him. They took him in his unconscious state to the temple of Radha Madan Mohan. The Goswami of the temple, that it was some experience of divine that had made Baba unconscious. He asked everyone to surround Baba and perform Kirtan. 
the sound of kirtan gradually brought him back to consciousness. Goswamiji head of Radha Mohan Temple, then took him aside after rendering necessary service and making Baba feel at home. He asked him what had made him unconscious. And Baba revealed the whole story with broken words, with tears, incessantly streaming out of his eyes. Baba's lifelong desire was fulfilled. But even then, his tears did not stop. He wept even more, more. Naturally so, because the separation after meeting is more painful than separation before meeting. Not being able to bear the separation after his meeting with Radha Krishna for a long Baba left the physical body to meet Radha Krishna in his spiritual body in transcendental Vrindavan. One might wonder why, if Radharani is really so kind, why she kept Baba crying for 40 years? Could she not appear before him earlier? She could, but could Baba really see her then? Radha is not made of flesh and bones, which our eyes can see. Radha is made of love. She is love personified. And in order to see her, one must have the eyes made of love. Love does not develop in a heart which is impure. The heart has to be purified by sadhana. The best sadhana is weeping in separation. The tears that flow in remembrance of Radha and Krishna, wash away all sins and offenses, aparadas, and the fire of separation that burns in the heart consumes the wild growth 
of all sorts of worldly desires. It is then that the ground is prepared for the seed of love to sprout and grow. When the seed grows and blossoms, Radha and Krishna cannot remain indifferent. They automatically come to feel its fragrance. Radhe Radhe This is our second Baba. Jai. So again. <laughs> Some. Daddy, any questions or comments? Sharing. Sharing any realizations? Guru Dave, anything to say? Mm -hmm. okay. So we Continue chapter twenty seven title Shri Gauranga Das Babaji. After my spiritual master. Shri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj had passed away. I was in great distress. Though I knew that his merciful hand was still on me. I felt that without his living presence, I was like an orphan. Orphan means like no parents, abandoned child. There was no one to whom I could go for successor, guidance, inspiration. My wife was even in greater distress. because she had only received harina from him. She was to be given proper initiation on some auspicious day later. But my spiritual, our spiritual master passed away before that auspicious day comes. Okay. We used to go to Vrindavan to search for a Siddha Mahatma 
whom we could accept as our spiritual guide, spiritual guardian. So once I asked an old saint in Vrindavan, is there a Siddha saint in Vrindavan at present? Like spirit, a spiritual generator of power to whom one could go to charge his battery whenever it became weak or got discharged. Of course, he replied. Have you not met Shri Gorangadas Babaji Maharaj of Raman Reddy? No. Then uh, what have you been coming to Vrindavan for? <laughs> he is the only Siddha saint in Vrindavan at present. Huh. What is un ostentatious. He is most unostentatious and humble. Unostentatious. Rather, humble. He is most unostentatious and humble. But the spiritual treasure behind his simplicity can hardly escape the eyes of a discerning sadhaka. You must go and see him. Every sadhaka can see. My wife and I went to see him the same evening. We saw a fair colored attractive looking sadhu of about 60 sitting all alone in his room doing job his eyes were wet His face shining, and the heavenly peace seemed to reign on and around him, atmosphere of peace. It appeared from his eyes that love which filled his heart up to the brim was spilling out through his eyes. He cast a tender look at us as if to draw us close to his heart and give us a loving embrace. He felt, we felt that we had found the guardian, the great saint we were looking for. Our hearts melt, tears begin to stream from our eyes. Baba could understand that we were in distress. And she said affectionately, 
if there is anything that troubles you, don't worry. Go and tell your tale to a wish-fulfilling tree over there. He pointed out the neem trees in his ashram. Every tree in Vrindavan is a wish-fulfilling tree. Kalpatar. If you embrace it and speak out your heart to it, it listens and helps. There is nothing. It cannot help you with. It can even present to you the most cherished objects of your heart. Radha and Krishna. If you so desire. <laughs> Baba continued. Listen, I will give you an example. A young boy, aspiring at the darshan of Krishna, he renounced the world, went to Vrindavan. Although he came of a high family, and was brought up in lux luxury, he became a Babaji. Lived in complete seclusion in the forests. Doing bhajan throughout the day. Only once in the evening, he went out into nearby a nearby village for Madukari. Okay. He used to be half naked. He was wearing only a loin cloth of huh, guni. I don't know what is guni. Right. Something, something. <laughs> yeah, loin, loin cloth. Yeah, yeah, something. We know what is loin cloth. One winter, so yeah, half naked. <laughs> One winter morning, when the weather was drizzly, we know Vrindavan, winter morning in Vrindavan, drizzly. He began to shiver with cold. Since there was no other shelter in the forest, he sat inside the hollow of an old tree, went into the tree, and began to meditate on Krishna. And he was crying upon remembering him. After some time, he heard a voice coming from another tree in front of him. The tree said to him, yeah, the tree said to the tree, under which Baba was sitting, <laughs> tree to tree. <laughs> Look, a Mahatma has taken shelter under you. Show mercy to him. Why not you show mercy? Replied the other tree. 
Then, from the tree in front, came down a peacock. Peacock stood before Baba with his wings unfurled. unfurled. Then another peacock came down and stood beside the first peacock in the same manner with its wings unfurled. Then another and another till a semicircle of peacocks was formed around Baba. And the next moment, Baba saw standing before him in the midst of the peacocks, Krishna himself, with a peacock feather on his crown, the flute held in his hands near his mouth, and bewitching, <laughs> bewitching smile, charming smile on his lips, bewitching. I was thrilled. Goranga das Babaji did not name the young, the young Baba who was blessed in this way with the vision of Sri Krishna by the mercy of the wish-fulfilling trees of Vrindavan. But later, I came to know that this story actually was Baba's story. <laughs> Therefore, as Baba described the scene of Krishna standing before him amidst the peacocks, he seemed to see it and go into a trance. But somehow, he collected himself and said, So you see how powerful and merciful are the wish-fulfilling trees of Vrindavan? If you go, and pray to them, they would give you what you desire. My wife asked, Baba, if I go to a Kalpataru, there is only one thing I shall pray for. I will say, Give me the guru I want. But since I have found now in you the guru I want, why should I go to the Kalpataru and not pray to you directly? Would you not kindly give me Diksha and accept me as your disciple, Shishya? Lali, you are mine, replied Baba, full of love. And what about me, Baba? I asked excitedly. You are both mine, said Baba, looking at me 
with deep affection. But Baba, I am already initiated by Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj. So what? Said Baba. He is your Diksha Guru, I'm your Shiksha Guru. You should regard the Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru as one. My problem was solved. Baba gave me the best of his love and blessings. And in the few remaining years of his life, I remained close with him. Goranga Das Babaji's earlier name was Dhirendra Nata Chakravarti. He was born in an aristocratic Brahmin family in Changripota. a village about 10 miles from Calcutta. Uh, his father, Sri Bupendra Nath, was a rich landlord. He sent Dhirendra and his younger brother Fanindra to Darjeeling for better education. Direndra passed the entrance examination in first division from Darjeeling. Then he was admitted into the Sanskrit college of Calcutta and uh, Panindra was also admitted into, into the Sanskrit college after passing the entrance examination. They had also elder brother Narendra who was already student of Sanskrit college. Panindra and Narendra had come under the influence of Jyotin Mukherjee, the great revolutionist, who was called Banga Kesari, the Lion of Bengal, by the people of Bengal. And he was killed fighting against the British in Baleshwara. These two brothers were engaged all the time in revolutionary activities. Both of them had taken leading part in Pabana Decoiti cast like decoity. What is decoit? Like gangster. Like partisans. Yeah, like some underground army. Yeah, some kind. Uh, Pabana decoity case. Uh, Narendra was arrested. Fanindra swam across the Bay of Bengal, oh my God, mm -hmm. and reached China through Burma to collect arms for the revolutionaries. 
the fire of revolution was blazing in the heart of Direndra as well. But it was not ordinary revolution against the ruler or a government. In his case, it was revolution against Maya. The ruler of all rulers. Direndra was blessed plentifully with all the good things that Maya could give. Rich heritage, good health, attractive personality, sharp intelligence, all the best false facilities for good education and the possibility of the, of the prosperous future career. But all these seem to him, him to fade, like disappear into insignificance. In the absence of the one thing that really matters and that gives meaning to everything else. Direndra thing. But he badly, he really needed a guide or a guru who could lead him up to, the, to this one thing. Sister Nivedita was a disciple of Swami Vivekananda. So this Ramakrishna Mission Hospital, here is, a, here is the Vivekananda's statue. That's what I thought, I was like, it's a familiar name. Because... Yeah, Vivekananda, you know. <laughs> so yeah, closer and closer in history. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. She loved Direndra very much. She once took him to Swami Brahmananda of Belurmat for initiation. But Brahmananda thought, expressed that this boy is going to be great Vaishnava. And his Diksha Guru should be and will be a Siddha Vaishnava. Mm -hmm. So Durendra, upon hearing this, began to look for a Siddha Vaishnava saint. <laughs> While studying in the Sanskrit college, he used to uh, go for from Changripota to Calcutta by train. One day, while he was going to Calcutta, he met a Vaishnava in the train. So he asked him, Do you know any Siddha Vaishnava saint? Yes, I do. Haven't you heard 
of Sri Ramadas Babaji Maharaj. He is the only Siddha Vaishnava I know. I have seen such Ashta Sattvika Bhavas. Ecstatic symptoms of pure love, God, appear on his body at the time of Kirtan as I have neither seen nor heard anywhere else. This Rama Das Baba is the disciple of Sri Radha Raman Charandas Babaji Maharaj. And the miracles of Radha Raman Baba are making the tree dance, making the tree dance in Sankirtan, bringing back to life a corpse ready to be burned on the funeral pyre uh, pyre pier how do you, funeral fire fire granting krishna prema to people just by embracing him <coughs> and many many other miracles and they are well known all over Bengal and Orissa. You mean Bane Babaji Maharaj? Yes, Bane Babaji. He's publicly known as Bane Babaji. <coughs> oh, I have certainly heard many stories about his supernatural powers. <coughs> including the power to transform the life of persons by mere sight, just by seeing them or touching them. Please be kind. Tell me where his disciple Ramadas Babaji is. He lives at present in Kolhutola, in the lodge of Sri Motilal Seal, whatever it is. <laughs> that day, Direndra did not go to the college. He went straight to Seal's lodge. He saw a saint wearing a flower garland and holding a rosary bag, japa bag, in his hand. Sauntering in the veranda, like just relaxing in the veranda. The saint's sharp eyes were fixed on Direndra. It appeared as if he was trying to peep into the innermost corner of Direndra's heart as if he had found someone who was his own and whom he had been looking for all these days. Direndra also mm -hmm. felt that he had found the soul of his soul the guru he was looking for. Still, he said, 
within himself. Gurudev, if you are really my guru, kindly let me know that by throwing your garland around my neck. Just then, the saint garlanded Direndra with the garland he was wearing. Direndra fell at his feet, broke into tears, saying, Gurudeva, ha, Gurudeva. Gurudeva picked him up gave him loving embrace mm -hmm. and said don't worry mm -hmm. i'm yours mm -hmm. you are mine mm -hmm. on an auspicious day, Direndra was duly initiated by Ramadas Babaji Maharaj. Mm -hmm. As soon as Direndra heard Diksha Mantra, he went into Samadhi. which continued for about eight hours. In Samadhi, he saw Swarupa, real self, a beautiful girl of 11 or 12, with golden radiance emanating from her body, carrying flowers for adorning the hair of Radha. Now, it became difficult for Direndra to live without Gurudev. Day after day, Direndra would start from home for the college, but instead of going to the college, he would go to Seal's Lodge and sit at his feet, listen Harikata from him, and attend his soul-steering and heart-melting curtains. Still, Direndra passed the intermediate examination in first division. He was admitted into the Scottish Church College in BA something, Bachelor's Apartment, in a Scottish Church College. He stood out prominently as a versatile genius. He was brilliant, had wonderful memory. He could rem remember and reproduce exactly whatever he 
heard once. He topped. In the terminal examinations of his class, the best. He was a good football player. <laughs> Played on the behalf of the most reputed football teams of Calcutta. Wow. <laughs> he was good. Uh, he was a good wrestler, too. <laughs> he once surprised everyone but by defeating in wrestling a Japanese wrestler who had come to the college to demonstrate his wrestling feats. Oh my God. Above all, he had an ideal character and was thoroughly religious. His English teacher fondly called him Master Puritan. Radhe, Radhe. So, Radha Mohan are calling. <coughs> and this chapter has lots more. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next time, Shridhar will. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amka. Radha, Thank you, Radha. beautiful, huh? Yeah, so nice. Good. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, what my God. page was this? This was page 274. Yeah, chapter 27. 27. Uh. Chapter 27. Um, 44, where's how many? Ah, beautiful. Rade, Rade, we hope you enjoyed yes. and now are inspired for beautiful devotion to Radha and Mohan. <laughs>